Welcome to our faith community of Sacred Heart on the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. My name is Abigail Mahan. The special name for this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, comes from the entrance antiphon. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We are nearing the end of Advent. Thus, we have every reason to rejoice, as the coming of the Lord is very near. We light the rose-colored candle on the Advent week, and we listen to the many words and images of joy found in the scriptures for this beginning. Today is also the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, who is the patroness of the Americas. Our church is decorated with a special display to honor her. If you have a cell phone or other electronic device, please be sure that they are silenced during Mass. We have been asked this Mass to pray for the eternal rest of John Burnesh. We wish to thank you for continuing to observe careful social distancing, wearing your face covering throughout Mass, and continuing the practice of walking around the back to use the center aisle to receive communion if you are seated in the silence. At this time, we ask that you please stand and join us in the opening pen. Oh, thank you. Tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, in my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
now reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, Who are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they asked him, They said to him, Who are you? So that we can give an answer to those who sent us. What you have to say for yourself. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, or Elisha, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened at Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, 
how to live, how to be good people, how to be good Christians. Do we honor them in other ways, but do we not honor them um, in the way you know, that would really honor them more than anything is to really kind of follow their example, especially if they're really, really good people. As um, Abigail mentioned it before our Mass, we uh, celebrate several things today. Um, Gaudete, Sunday, as she, as she explained. Um, rejoice in the entrance and the pond. Um, rejoice in the Lord. But also something, as she also mentioned, we celebrate the Feast of Army of Lupe. And um, what devotion that the, um, the Hispanics, really mostly in Mexico, of course, because she uh, appeared in Mexico. But, you know, in many parts of Latin America, um, Mary is honored. And I was thinking this morning because um, we kind of have different schedule each year, but most most years to celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe, we get up at an ungodly hour. And it sounds terrible to use that term, ungodly, right? We're honoring Mary. But, um, you know, so like this morning at 6 a.m., and people hear it as singing songs to Mary. Just, and I, it really struck me that in, in this hemisphere, in this entire hemisphere, all these people just um, honoring Mary and singing to her. You know, imagine how that makes Mary feel. You know, an entire hemisphere of people singing songs to Mary because it's a very common way of celebrating that. But also, as I mentioned before, you know, the, um, we have a image here. And if you've not seen that, the actual film, as it's called in Mexico City, it's just incredible to see the actual original. But of course, the you know, altars that um, are made uh, in honor of Mary. So many, many ways could we, we honor our Mother Mary as she should be honored, many ways. But again, there's a question I ask with our parents. Do we sing songs to Mary? Do we um, you know, have banners? Do we build um, whole altars for her to honor her? But yet, do we, do we follow her example? And do we follow the example of Mary? And so I'm just thinking, you know, if we do all these things to honor uh, Mary, um, but yet we don't really follow her example in our lives, you know, um, are we really completely honoring her? I know that um, we, our parents, you know, when we're little, little kids, you know, we don't understand why our parents teach us to do things, why they make us do things, why they don't let us do other things, right? But they're doing that because they, they love us. Our parents do that. And they care about us. We don't understand that we're little kids, right? Well, it's the same thing with um, our mother Mary, the Blessed Mother, is that she, like any good mom, she just wants absolute best for us. And above all, she wants our happiness, you know, because what could make her happier than her children's happiness? You know, those of you who are parents um, know all about that. So it's a beautiful opportunity for us to give thanks to Mary and to honor her, you know, in songs and prayers. Um, but above all, really, to, to follow her beautiful example um, in our lives. And in the end, we're the ones that, that win. You know, we're the ones that gain um, good things from that. The, uh, the readings today we talk about this at Gaudete, it really, it means rejoice and follows that, but also the, that some people call pink rose vestments, we're supposed to call them rose vestments. Now, well, what's wrong with pink? There's nothing wrong with pink. Pink is a very beautiful color. But it's really, um, you know, called rose because you know, this and also in, in Lent, uh, they try it Sunday, you really kind of the same idea that during this time it's a sign of hope as we see um, plants blossom, you know, they usually don't in the winter time, although that's part of the miracle of the apparition of the Blessed Mother in, in, uh, in Mexico City because of the, the roses blooming at the time of the Chanel bloom. But it really kind of represents a, um, you know, hope in the time of the, the cold of winter and the coming, um, coming of Christ. But also not just every year, but really in, in eternity, because um, as, as we hear in the Gospel today of John, John the Baptist, we hear about that again, the voice of one crying in the desert. You know, so imagine beautiful flowers blooming in the desert, from all the darkness um, and starkness and dryness to life. So there's really kind of a, um, what the Sabbath is all about. So let us rejoice. And of course, of all the years, you know, it's easy for us to despair, you know, with everything going on. I won't go through, you all know the list. All the crazy stuff going on that we've seen this year. So above all, this is a beautiful time for us to not despair, but to rejoice in the Lord and really um, always believe in His promises, His goodness. And again, let us um, give thanks to the, the Blessed Mother for appearing to us and caring for us and let us honor her by following her beautiful example.
physical for my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints of these Jews throughout the ages. May they merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
We have a couple of announcements tonight. The Sacred Heart Christmas Bazaar has many items for sale next door and yet to giggle. Please stop by my store to shop. You may purchase both before and after any of the mattresses next week and also. We also remind you to pick up your peanut brittle order too. And we have new Sacred Heart calendars for you that you may pick up in the back. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the Mass.